Hi, I'm Dennis DiCicco, Senior Editor of Sky and Telescope Magazine here in Suffern, New York at the 2012 Northeast Astronomy Forum NEAF. And right now I'm speaking with Chris Morrison, Mead's Vice President of Support Services. Mead's got a lot of new products here to show, but there's a reason for that. That's absolutely correct, Dennis. We're really excited this year, Dennis. This is our 40th anniversary, and Mead is putting all of our effort in developing the best, most innovative, and affordable product that we've ever offered in our history. So you've got a lot of new things that are very sophisticated, but very easy for people to use and learn how to use. And at every price point, from under $1,000 to just over $17,000. Wow, let's take a look. What do you want to show me first? Let's look at the LX80. Okay. Dennis, this is our LX80 multi-mount. And this is kind of our entry level, very, very flexible mounting system. And by multi-mount, we really refer to the different configurations you can achieve in this. A lot of our telescopes are capable of being set up in Altaz or in Polar. This mount is different. First, it can be set up with dual OTAs in Altaz, which is great if you're doing solar observing or if you're doing outreach or simply want two optical tubes pointing at the same target utilizing the same computer go-to system. All right, so this mount has computer tracking and right. go-to capability. Correct. All right, and you've got it set up in the Altazimuth mode here with the dual telescopes. You've got two solar telescopes on here right now that Mead produces, right? We do, and this mount is also available for purchase with either of the two telescopes shown, or you can purchase the mount separately or with a variety of other optical tubes we have available. All right, so this Altazimuth mount will handle quite a load by the looks of it. It will, it'll handle up to a 10-inch SC mount. We offer appropriate counterweights. These are 11-pound counterweights. You can also utilize counterweight shafts in different configurations, such as here in the middle of the shaft, to help offset set two optical tubes of different weights. Very good. So it's a multi-mount, there's different configurations. You want to show me others? Sure. Here's a, it's probably a little more traditional configuration that we expect with a single optical tube and a counterweight shaft on the other side. Uh, as you can see, the counterweight shaft actually splits to allow all the various configurations and be highly flexible. You can offer multiple tubes, multiple counterweights, and different configurations, well, all in the Altaz position. So how can you power these? It looks like you have a 12-volt power input, but is there other ways? There is. There's the onboard batteries. It just takes uh, eight AA batteries. It'll run for about three or four hours in the field on AA's. Very good. So you don't need any power cables connected to it? No. All right. What's the third configuration? The third configuration is equatorial mode. Ah, so tell me a little bit about this. So as you can see, in equatorial mode, what we're doing is simply inclining the mount. We have a nice tool that allows you to make all the adjustments you need to make. It works from unlocking and locking the, uh, the axes and also making adjustments in altitude and azimuth. So you got the fine control of being able to tip it and get the thing polar aligned. That is correct. All right. So obviously in the equatorial mode, this will give people the advantage of doing astrophotography. And tracking the sky only using one motor. All right. So that comes as a single package that can be set up in all three ways. Correct. You don't have to have any extra equipment. That's correct. And it comes as a mount only. We have two optical tube versions with the three element APO. We also have three of our Schmidt Cassegrain in 6, 8, and 10. And we also have our 90 and 60 millimeter solar max options. All right, so those are whole package deals, the mounts and the telescopes yes. all as a package price. Correct. Very good. All right, what next do you want to show me? Well, let's talk about our LX800. Okay. This is our LX800 with Starlock. All right, so last fall when I talked to you about these, they were in the final stages of prototypes. This looks like it's a completely ready-to-go unit. It's not only a ready-to-go unit, it's been shipping for about two weeks. Ah. Our, our LX80 started shipping last week. All right, so those all of the scopes we've looked at so far are available now. That's correct. All right, you want to show me a couple of the details here? The main features start with our a robust German equatorial mount, transitions to our F8 optical tube that's also available with an F5 focal reducer which will be very fast for astrophotographers. And then, of course, the smarts is our integrated Starlock, which offers full-time automatic auto-guiding, ultra-high precision pointing. And the beauty of this guider versus all other guiders is it's completely closed loop. We offer faster feedback to the telescope than competing guiders, allowing for more accurate guiding. All right, so as we had talked about this once before, the thing about Starlock is you just command it to go to an object, it slews to that object, 
it uses its own internal smarts to center that object precisely, and then it automatically finds a guide star and begins tracking. And down to an 11th magnitude guide star. An 11th magnitude, and you don't have to do anything other than say, go there, and it does it all automatically. So if you have a camera on there, once it's started to track and started to guide, you just open the shutter and take your picture. Focus and shoot. Focus and shoot. And set up in the field even has a computer-assisted polar alignment routine, right? It does. You can actually align this telescope in about three minutes and be guiding in about three and a half. So just take it out, set it up, and you're ready to go. We also have a drift align assist, which actually uses the star lock to help image a star and assist a user in getting this precisely drift aligned to make sure you're not getting any declination or RA drift. All right, get the precise polar alignment that you need for really critical astrophotography. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, so I see over here you've got an LX800 mount configured with an optical tube, a refractor. What, what telescopes can you put on this mount? You can put essentially anything you want. This is our 130 millimeter ED triplet. It offers a three inch focuser, and this is for the refractor aficionados. Uh, the base telescope comes as a mount alone. It's also available in a 10, 12, and 14 inch F8 optical tubes and our ACF optics. And then of course we have our ED triplet APO that's also available. All right, so it's a 130 millimeter aperture. The F number is? F7. F7, and do you have a field flattener for it? We do. All right, so that will give you a coverage, what, on a full frame uh, 35 millimeter type camera? It's designed to hit the larger sensors and be able to give full frame illumination. Wow, that's nice. And you said you can have the, uh, your regular ACF optics all the way up to 14 inches on the LX800 mount. That's correct. And the nice thing about the cradle is the fact that you can actually transition this from a Vixen style dovetail mount to a Los Mandy style dovetail mount, which is moving an accessory rail. Ah. So any type of telescope that you've got that's got a standard, what's standard in the industry for telescopes, dovetail, will fit on this mount. That's correct. So I know you've got some new stuff over here that's brand new. Are these being unveiled here at NEEF? They are. All right, do you want to tell me about this? Yeah, I'm really excited to show you. This is our new LX600. And the LX600 is a really exciting product for me personally. I've been a fan of the LX200 for many years, long before I started with Mead, as many other amateur astronomers have been. And we continue to improve upon the platform for a number of years, but no time in our history have I been so excited about it because we've been able to add Starlock to the LX600. Now, just to go back, when you said you talked about the LX200, those were your classic fork-mounted telescopes that you've had for many, many that years. That we've built a lot of our reputation on. So there's a lot of advantages to a fork-mounted instrument, especially for people like myself that like to do astrophotography. Well, and the best thing about it is the fact that there's no meridian flip. You could, tra you could track through the best part of the sky without ever having to worry about the telescope stopping, flipping over to the other side of the meridian and continuing to track. Which you have to do with most German equatorial mounts. That's correct. All right, now, so you've got star lock on this. Does it work exactly the same way as it the works LX100? It works exactly the same way, except for this also works when it's in Altaz mode. The wedge is an available option. We actually sell the wedge with the telescope and without it. So you can actually get these in several different configurations. But the star lock's going to work in Altaz and in polar mode. So you get the same ultra high precision pointing and full time auto guiding regardless of the configuration. All right, now most astrophotographers wouldn't think of doing long exposure photography in Altaz mode, but I suppose in this day and age where people take relatively short exposures and then add them all up to a final image, the little bit of field rotation that would happen as you track in Altaz mode really becomes insignificant when you add the images together. That's right, Dennis. We've actually, in testing, been able to get really great results on deep sky objects that I never dreamed possible just by having the auto guiding feature run in all TAS mode. Taking 30 to 45 second exposures is quite easy. And with today's day and age, when people are taking a lot of short exposures, you actually get a lot of depth and detail in a deep sky object that yeah, most people never thought possible. And of course, the advantage of having it set up in all TAS mode is it's very simple. You don't have to do the polar alignment. And you get one additional benefit with the Starlock in that you get light switch style uh, alignment. In the sense of? In the sense that it will do a, a hands off automatic alignment, automatically aligning two alignment stars and getting you aligned. Oh, for the go to pointing. That's correct. So you get the precise go to capability. And how, how good is that? Down to an arc minute. Down to an arc minute on the pointing. That's correct. In our ultra high precision mode, it's down to one arc minute pointing. One arc minute. That'll get the 
objects centered on any chip I can think on of. On any chip around. All right. And of course, for the people that want to go the full equatorial route and set this up on a wedge, looks like you've got a new wedge here. We do. We wanted a perfect platform to support our LX600. So we redesigned our old Ultra Wedge, and we now we have our X Wedge. This is all CNC machined aluminum out of air, aircraft grade aluminum. And as you can see, quite a bit more sturdy. We estimate about 30% sturdier than our old Ultra Wedge. So tell me a little bit about the optical tube assemblies that are available in the LX600 series. Well, first we adapted the F8 ACF optical tubes from our LX800 and added them to the LX600 to offer performance that nobody else has in this price range. And we offer a, a 10, 12, 14, and 16 inch F8 optical tube assembly. F8. And what about focal reducers? We have an F5 focal reducer that's available that's baffle mounted so for the widest possible field of view to illuminate even the largest sensors. All right, so you can use them in F8 and F5. And I know there's a couple of other new features that have been added into these tube assemblies, especially about the focus. You want to tell me a little bit about that? This is our seven to one dual speed internal Crayford styled zero image shift focuser. All right, so people know about Crayford focuses, but internal is a little bit surprising. Most people would expect to see a Crayford focuser back here. What's going on in the scope? One of the problems with movable mirror primary telescopes is image shift. You actually achieve radial movement whenever you try to shift the mirror forward and back. Focusing. Exactly. And it's been a problem for a lot of different people. We've tried to adopt a variety of different mirror locks throughout our history, but this is by far the most successful design because it, it, it's truly transparent to the user. Instead of using a slider and a baffle type system, which just allowed the mirror to move based on machining tolerances and friction, we actually support the slider on the baffle using six roller bearings to achieve a perfect fit to allow you to move the mirror forward and back without, ever it, without it ever moving radially. So that's a Crayford type system. So you've actually got the Crayford focuser sliding up and down on the baffle that's carrying the mirror. That's correct. And this keeps the mirror from tipping as it goes back and forth. It does, and holds precise focus, horizon and horizon. Precise focus, and you've got a dual speed mechanism for moving the mirror in and out. That's correct, fine dual focus speed. is critical, so we added a seven to one dual speed focuser to boot. So the LX600, we've got the 10, the 12, the 14 inch, the largest one is the 16 inch in the 600 series? That's correct, and it's on our observatory class mount. Want to take a look? Sure. Now this is a prototype, this is the last in the development cycle. This is based primarily on our LX200, and many people are big fans and are very familiar with our 16 inch LX200. We're in the process of adding our F8 optical tube. This is currently the F10 version. And of course, we added Starlock to give it all the ultra high precision pointing and full time auto guiding features of our LX800 and smaller LX600s. But for the first time in our history, we've actually added a wedge to the 16. It's the first time you've been able to field transport our 16 inch and be able to get it polar mounted and not have to rely on a field derotator or leave it at home permanently, permanently mounted. All right, so you want to tell me a little bit about that? That's obviously all new, the wedge and the tripod as well. Yeah, the wedge and the tripod are adapted from our Max series. So it's a perfect platform to support the weight of such a big telescope. This actually offers an incredible adjustment range and supports the 16 inch perfectly. All right, so in field use, this obviously breaks down into modular components. That's correct, it's five different components. We break down the tripod, the wedge, the drive base, the fork arm, and the optical tube blast. So it looks like two people could easily set this up without any additional help? Yes. So the 16 inch is in the final stages of prototyping. How about the uh, other scopes? The 10, 12, and 14 are essentially done. We're waiting for our final uh, version of firmware, and we expect to start shipping sometime in late May. So those will be going out by the end of next month, you hope? Yeah, uh, we hope. The 16 will take a couple more months. As you know, we still don't have the F8 glass ready just yet, but it'll be following in the months after the launch of the smaller apertures. Wow. You guys have been busy bringing out all the stuff in the last year. We've been working really hard, but it's been probably one of the most exciting years uh, of my time at Mead. I've been there for over a decade, and we're just uh, really enthusiastic about what the future holds and, and what we can contribute to the amateur market. All right. Well, Chris, listen, I want to thank you very much for telling me all about this stuff. I want to congratulate you on your 40th anniversary of supporting the amateur community with all this great equipment. Thank you, Dennis. I'm Dennis DiCicco for Sky and Telescope here at the 2012 Meet Conference in Suffern, New York.